colleagues and distinguished delegates, let me welcome you to the session two. Uh, peace loss reduction for increased peace production. We shall have two presentations in successions focusing on this theme, reserving some 30 minutes for an open forum for discussions and further contribution from members of, uh, at the end of the session. I urge you to be liberal with your interventions and contributions because we have uh, plenty of time. Our first item in this session is a presentation entitled Public-Private Partnership for Peace Loss Assessment and uh, Reduction Strategies. This presentation will be delivered by Professor Ching Cheng Chang, Professor, Department of Agricultural Economics, NTU, Chinese Taipei. Professor Chang, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon, uh, distinguished delegates. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, uh, report uh, the progress of our public-private partnership multi-year project. Uh, in this forum, that uh, we focus on the food security and blue economy, so I will first highlight a few important facts and then uh, followed by uh, the current progress and, and the knowledge sharing and also our next step. Okay, so uh, from the uh, uh, food security and blue economy aspect, we all know that the ocean provides abundant food sources for all mankind. And this chart shows that on a global scale, in the past five decades, the fish production has grown steadily uh, in uh, 3.2% uh, increase annually, uh, which outpaced the uh, population growth of 1.6%. And uh, however, APAC as a whole, uh, you can see that from this graph that um, uh, this kind of uh, growth has been stagnated uh, in recent decade. Uh, and also APAC as a whole, that you can see that um, we contribute quite substantial, like 64% for the total uh, capture uh, fishery, but the, it is unlikely we can see any significant increase uh, in the near future. And um, uh, the reason, uh, main reason is there from the FAO um, um, uh, the, uh, marine uh, fish stock assessment, we can see that the uh, marine fish resources has been uh, uh, depleting, uh, and also 90% of the uh, fishery stock are either overfished or fully fished. So less than 10% uh, is underfished. So the growth potential in this area is very limited. Uh, and uh, although very luckily the, uh, there are rapid expansion in the aquaculture uh, that has uh, provided another uh, important uh, food sources. Uh, as you can see from this chart, that um, APAC economy as a whole contribute more uh, significant portion, like 83% of aquaculture coming from uh, the APAC region, and uh, the uh, growth rate is much higher in recent decade. Can reach, uh, you can see this chart, it's, as high as 6.2% uh, per year in recent decade. But uh, there are significant challenges facing, uh, in confronting all of us. Like in the capture fishery, we see that uh, there are overcapacity, uh, the IUU fishing that has been discussed extensively, and also there are problems with the discard and bycatch, and also the pollution issue from many natural disaster and uh, also climate change, etc. And on the aquaculture, the growth also face a uh, significant challenge in recent years, uh, especially from the insufficient wild seeds and the fish meal shortage and the disease problem and also environmental impact on the limited land and water, et cetera. Although uh, many innovation provide solutions and options for, for uh, uh, 
some uh, so to to be able to uh, cope with these challenges. But uh, like for example, those uh, uh, R and D in diseases or. Uh, uh, artificial propagation and uh, feeding using vegetarian uh, protein, etc. Uh, but these are mostly we can do in the uh, unilateral basis, or but we still need uh, to strengthen our uh, uh, international co cooperation uh, in the APAC region that to uh, to have more multilateral co cooperation in fishery management, etc. And um, so uh, in today that we uh, find out that uh, the uh, uh, food security cannot be ensured by increased uh, production alone, we have to uh, also focus on the, uh, how we can reduce food losses and waste. And so uh, Chinese Taipei initiated this uh, project uh, in, and uh, also approved by APAC as a cross forum multi-year project starting from year 2013. And this year, we get together in Iloilo so that we can focus on the, uh, the sector on the fisher of fishery and livestock. And this multi-year project will address uh, the methodology on full loss assessment and also uh, the capacity building and toolkits uh, database uh, sharing, information sharing, so that we can achieve the, uh, uh, the goal of our full security and also uh, uh, to meet the, uh, uh, the full security roadmap toward the year 2000, uh, 2020. And, uh, and this project has three main purpose. First is to identify the key issues, and then second is the, uh, uh, the best practice in terms of public-private uh, partnership, and also to enhance the capacity building. Um, so uh, now let us turn to the attention of why we want to uh, uh, address the issue of food loss and waste, why it is uh, such an urgent issue. Uh, that based on the FAO study, we all know that one third of the uh, food, uh, uh, edible food is, uh, 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 which uh, is about 1.3 billion ton per year has get lost or waste along the uh, food supply chain. So uh, the value of these losses can be uh, uh, estimated uh, as high as uh, US dollar, one trillion uh, per year. So this is a, the, uh, uh, an urgent issue, but if we uh, look at the challenge for APAC as a whole, the main issue is uh, how we can uh, find the way to reduce these losses, uh, which uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, find a, a mixture of public-private sector to, to be able to join this effort because the supply chain, uh, and the food value chain in this area is, uh, 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 should be the key uh, uh, to address this issue. And uh, we, so we want to uh, find the answer in terms of both uh, identify the, uh, the hotspot area uh, so that we, we, we need a, a comprehensive loss assessment methodology uh, to, to do this. And also we need to find the uh, definition and the quantification Verification method so that we can uh, find the uh, proper measurement uh, we, uh, to address the uh, not only the quantity issue but also the quality and nutritional uh, aspect of the losses. And uh, in terms of finding the uh, loss reduction method, there are not only the technical issue but also the sanitary issues and also the cost and benefit, uh, especially the the uh, the. Um, uh, during the process of reducing the losses, there are uh, uh, many uh, uh, economic issues that we need to also address. And also, the, uh, the, uh, we, we have to uh, realize there's uh, rapid changes in the cons uh, consumption behavior and the patterns in this region, so that we, how we can uh, uh, address the issue, uh, the consumer's uh, awareness and also uh, uh, their behavior uh, has to be uh, taken into account. Uh, so, so in this uh, effort that we uh, 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 
uh, in the fishery and the lifestyle sector this year is uh, for, for the uh, to address the, these losses in this year. And uh, we find that uh, in, if in terms of loss assessment, there's uh, very few uh, data available and also very few assessment has been done in this area. Uh, and so we, uh, uh, in order to investigate uh, the current situation, so uh, we hold a, a expert consultation meeting in July uh, in Taipei, so that we invite the expert in this area to uh, 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 come to this meeting and uh, try to uh, uh, look into the uh, survey development for loss assessment and also. Uh, uh, as a preparation for the next step in terms of finding the solutions. Uh, so the key facts that we found is the, um, uh, the, the we, we do need a, 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 a good assessment survey, but it has to be well targeted for the best, uh, best data. And also we found that uh, the, uh, the uh, government signaling to a producer is an effective method to raise the awareness of consumer needs and interests which can, uh, uh, can reduce uh, the loss and waste effectively. And in terms of public-private partnership, we find that uh, this uh, partnership with buy-in will increase the data quality from assessment survey, but the uh, private producer needs to be uh, informed of the benefits so that they can uh, gain from all this kind of assessment and they are willing to share the information. So um, uh, the, uh, in, in this meeting, we uh, uh, actually uh, have invited uh, seven uh, experts uh, and across four different fora. Uh, beside the uh, ATC Working Group and the PPFS, we also have uh, ABAT member and also Ocean Fishery uh, uh, delegates to give presentation, and, and the 14 member economy delegates participate in this expert consultation to uh, uh, share their experience and also the challenges facing uh, all this loss assessment in the fishery and livestock sector. And uh, I think some of them are here today uh, that, that uh, they, uh, uh, in, like from Thailand, PNG, and the uh, Philippines. Uh, yeah, and the, um, in terms of uh, loss assessment, uh, beside the, uh, 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 the individual sharing, we also have uh, uh, provide a, a general uh, assessment from based on the FAO statistics that uh, we, uh, Based on this kind of uh, assessment, we found that uh, although the FAO full balance sheet are not perfect in statistical terms, but they do provide a consistent and clear picture of the overall full situation of uh, individual economy. And also these, uh, uh, but we do think that uh, a more refined definition and also uh, data verification is needed uh, to be able to identify the hotspot area that we, we would like to address. And, um, and also, uh, we talk about the assessment model that uh, which uh, uh, we found that uh, the recent report by the USA on the APEC fishery and post-harvest law summary report has already uh, created a, a, a refined model for fishery and livestock. So we follow, uh, I think we, uh, uh, we would like to follow this approach as a, uh, in terms of the APAC as a whole, but also because of we uh, we have we share the same um, uh, uh, idea that uh, although we have a general uh, we can get a general picture from this modeling approach, but we still need uh, more. Uh, 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 assessment and also the data verification is still a problem because of the data collection effort are still uh, in the progress or uh, has been uh, postponed in to, to some extent. So this is the uh, uh, summary report of the data collection progress uh, 
uh, which has been presented in our export consultation in Taipei that give us a chance to share uh, and also to learn the current progress that, uh, for example, that in Indonesia and Vietnam, they have a good uh, data collecting system that has been in ongoing, but then they have uh, postponed for, for some time, uh, to some extent, but, but I think the, uh, 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 also, they, there are some, uh, some also like PNG and Peru and also share their progress in this area. But uh, as you can see from this table that is still ongoing and also uh, uh, the only example that uh, uh, has shown a big uh, progress maybe in Korea or, or in New Zealand that they, they are already available but just, uh, we just need to find a, a, a consistent format to collect them. And uh, also it, during this uh, uh, expert consultation, uh, we find that uh, 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 a very interesting case from Korea that they did a survey that uh, can really tell, inform us that how the improvement in the post-harvest management can provide benefit to the producers and also to the supply chain. Like uh, their example is in the mackerel and oyster that uh, they can find out this kind of uh, uh, loss reduction can actually decrease the distribution costs uh, in the magnitude of 20% uh, in the mackerel case and the oyster up to 50%. And in terms of the increase in the uh, uh, fisher's price, uh, fisherman's price that can be also quite substantial. And one uh, interesting uh, uh, remark was provided by the APAC uh, uh, representative, Mr. Tada from Japan. And he's, he, uh, he said, uh, he provided this uh, remark that in terms of the loss reduction, uh, because natural disaster is commonly uh, observed in the APAC region, which affect the transportation sector uh, in a substantial uh, magnitude. So APAC is in fact a place uh, for problem understanding. And also it would be the most prudent for, to have APAC uh, recommend good practices uh, to the leaders and to be adopted independently uh, uh, across the member economies. And also in terms of loss assessment, uh, he also believed that the more refined uh, classification variable should be uh, adopted uh, on the individual basis and also uh, for the cross comparison. Uh, uh, but the uh, problem is the uh, private sector's response may be poor and we need to provide proper incentive. And so, so these are all, all the work that we have to uh, to uh, put together. So at the end, uh, we, we form a consensus that we need to formulate, uh, organize a technical team with the uh, expert uh, that's, uh, uh, that can agree to uh, work together uh, to collect the relevant data uh, for us to, uh, uh, to get uh, more precise information and, and also to identify uh, the key area or uh, for our uh, further pilot study to, uh, to uh, uh, introduce the, uh, uh, some improvement uh, uh, toolkits and, and also collect the um, uh, potential economic benefit from, uh, for the uh, uh, stakeholders to adopt all, all these uh, new uh, 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 solutions or options. And, and we also find that some of uh, potential solutions may require um, uh, uh, substantial investment infrastructure uh, development. So uh, in, turn, in the fishery sector that we've, uh, we think there are significant challenge. Uh, for example, the gap between the current lending and also post-harvest management is quite substantial and there are lack of uh, technical uh, te technology and equipment for post-harvest management and related uh, capacity building. Uh, and also uh, there's an improper cold chain in cargo transportation in, 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 in several member economies and, and also uh, uh, we found that uh, more seafood was being consumed 
so that there are more and more byproducts which can be uh, uh, used for creating more value added, uh, and also um, uh, and also we also observe that many consumers now prefer to buy fit, uh, seafood with the uh, pre-treatment process. Uh, so so there are a lot of room for improvement. So that it, which leads to uh, further enhance. Uh, uh, needs to strengthen the public-private partnership in all these areas, and uh, not in, only in terms of improving the data quality and collection process, uh, but also create more, um, uh, the partnership can be uh, uh, applicable to uh, create more favorable uh, business environment and, and to develop the more market-oriented structure for uh, the food, uh, the seafood uh, for export market and also for domestic market, and also the partnership uh, should be uh, uh, very uh, should be uh, uh, made to uh, inform the policy decision and also uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, make the uh, enforcement and some compliance issue uh, can be uh, dealt with more effective manner. And uh, in terms of knowledge sharing that uh, not only uh, we hold this expert consultation, but also we have an annual seminar uh, to provide all the uh, best practice and possible solution in terms of public-private partnership to all the member economies. So in year 2013 and 14, we held the uh, uh, seminar in Taipei and Beijing uh, for the food grain sector and also for vegetable and fruit sector. And this year, uh, we uh, uh, thank the, uh, 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 the Philippine and also New Zealand uh, effort. We uh, host the uh, seminar in Iloilo just uh, uh, in September 27, just as a kickoff of this full uh, security week. And uh, uh, so uh, in this uh, uh, seminar, uh, we uh, invite the um, uh, speakers and also we have breakout session and uh, uh, which uh, did to address the uh, the key challenge and opportunities in both loss assessment and loss reduction and also we try to find a possible solution through this kind of uh, uh, breakout discussion among the public and private uh, sectors and so uh, the highlight of this seminar is that uh, first we have uh, 80 participants from 12 APAC economy. Uh, so uh, I think uh, thank for the um, uh, local organizer, uh, Director Bingabing, and uh, one third of the participants are from the private sector. And among the speakers, we have 10 speakers, and the keynote is uh, uh, from, uh, invited uh, from, by, by New Zealand that uh, 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 Professor, uh, Dr. Ian Ferguson, that, and, and also we have nine speakers, uh, uh, three from the private sector, and uh, uh, four from academic, and two from the government. And the, um, uh, I think the, uh, uh, the main, uh, uh, issue that we'll uh, address here is uh, how we can uh, uh, harness the, uh, the partnership and by uh, uh, the loss re reduction uh, and also to recognize the uh, diversified needs uh, in this area. Uh, so like in the, uh, 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 during the presentation that uh, uh, our Japanese a speaker from Japan is from the Nishrei, and so uh, it, it, uh, the uh, experience sharing from the Japan's uh, development on the cold chain is that energy saving uh, is the key, and and uh, and also the experience sharing from the Philippines is uh, uh, in terms of the cold chain project development project is the human resource uh, training. Uh, it's also very important, and and also the the sharing from the sardine fishery uh, uh, that uh, the uh, fish uh, the fishing ban uh, fish uh, the the fishing ban in the spawning area that re really create the um, uh, uh, substantial growth potential for up to ten to fifteen percent 
so this is our all very important um, uh, uh, strategy and uh, practices that has to be uh, 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 implemented through this public and private partnership. And uh, also in, in Chinese Taipei, we provide the whole fish utilization type of uh, 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 practices that re uh, help to create uh, the uh, high value from the byproduct. So all this kind of um, development that uh, correspond to the uh, main message sent by our keynote speaker, uh, Dr. Ian Ferguson, that we, we need to develop a systematic approach so that food loss and, uh, the, can be reduced by the joint effort of the public and private and also the science scientific sector, but also we need to take into account the uh, market uh, uh, factor that uh, the food price and the market size also uh, should be taken into account uh, uh, during the process. And we need to provide economic incentive for, for the uh, facilitating the technology de uh, adoption. So uh, fi uh, finally, we have come up with the four major policy recommendations uh, that as an input to the senior official meeting uh, that uh, we uh, we to share here with all the delegates. Uh, the first one is that we, uh, from the, uh, 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 this uh, seminar, that we recognize and acknowledge the impact of food losses across the uh, uh, supply chain in this area, this is a critical challenge. And also we want to support the investigation into the multi-dimensional aspect of the food losses, uh, which include uh, genetic production, food safety, post harvest quality, logistic process, etc. And also we uh, need to encourage more capacity development and the use of pra best practice business model across this region because the, the prevalence of small business and also small fishers in this area. And also we need to foster communication and uh, uh, awareness to the general public for further collaboration in all these areas. So uh, finally, that, okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, all this uh, information and also the seminar and the export consultation uh, outcome will be uh, shared um, in, in this um, uh, information uh, platform that we, uh, through the uh, 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 internet. So uh, here is the website they, that we put all the uh, information uh, sharing seminar in the past three years and also uh, the toolkits that we collected uh, into the website so that uh, all the member economies and uh, uh, can be uh, uh, can obtain this information and uh, for the next step that we in the future that we uh, want to address uh, uh, continuously the uh, data uh, collection issue and, uh, and also we want to find the identify the most efficient and cost-effective way uh, to achieve the policy objective through this effort and uh, in terms of uh, best practice of public private partnership that we think it is important to investigate further the hidden cost and also what kind of uh, matrix that's needed to make the informed decision and to monitor the progress. And, and uh, so after ILO ILO, uh, we uh, will hold uh, held another seminar in Peru and which we will address uh, focus on the uh, retail and consumption uh, waste reduction programs and policy issues. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, further uh, uh, collaborate and also uh, create a cooperative uh, uh, measure to, uh, uh, do, uh, to conduct further study in this uh, area that we investigate the consumer behavior and how we can uh, uh, raise the public awareness of this issue in, in the, uh, and also get the uh, support from the retail uh, sector. And uh, so finally, I think the, uh, it is time uh, 
to work together to ensure our food security in a sustainable way. And so with this, I uh, would like to uh, thank again for the uh, uh, participation of all our member economy in ILO ILO. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this contribution, Professor Chang. Uh, next is a presentation on precision seafood harvesting, changing the way the New Zealand fishes. This presentation will be delivered by Mr. Tony Noel, PPFS Vice Chair, and also representing ABA New Zealand. Mr. Noel, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Chair. I'm just looking for the clicker, if I may. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to present to you, as the Chairman has, ju has just said, is an initiative called Precision Seafood Harvesting. And if I could have the presentation, please, AV, firstly on the screen. Could I have the Precision Seafood Harvesting presentation, please? Thank you. Okay, so this is a story of uh, fish loss reduction, and it's a story of fish loss reduction that leads to increased fishing productivity, higher quality, uh, better prices, and increased sustainability. It is a story of uh, smart thinking and clever innovation, and it is a collaboration between the New Zealand fishing industry with an initiative called Precision Seafood Harvesting in association with the Ministry of Primary Industries and New Zealand's leading plant and food research provider. If you focus for a moment on the photograph, the photograph will tell you the story, but I'm going to explain a little bit more in detail. So typically in oceanic fishing, you would be thinking of a net, a net that tends to crush fish, kill fish, damage fish, what you see in the photograph is in fact a replacement for a net where you see the fish quite freely swimming, quite happy, alive and maintaining their quality. Let me ask uh, firstly for a short video to introduce our smart thinking and smart innovation. Could I have the New Zealand story video please? Welcome to the land of open spaces. A country born from the sea, swelling with history. We are a nation bound to the ocean. It is our precious treasure, guarded by generations. The fourth largest fishing spot in the world. <laughs> but it's no secret. Welcome to the land of open hearts where everyone is met as a friend. Where honesty, trust and integrity is just part of our DNA. For generations, the ocean has been part of the family, passed down a line that's cast deep. We are overflowing with life. And while our oceans might be cold, our people are always warm. Welcome to the land of open minds, where our fresh outlook is just as fresh as our catch, where resourcefulness matters on the sea and off it, where innovation is plentiful and our catch is as pure as the water it comes from. Open spaces, open hearts, open minds. Experience seafood at its very best. So, what was the vision? Well, if we could imagine that every fish that came aboard a vessel was still alive, in perfect condition, and that the small fish and the bycatch, the other species, could be safely released underwater, before the catch was lifted on board. The 
program and its partners. As I said before, it is a six-year primary growth partnership program sponsored by the Ministry of Primary Industries and currently in its fourth year. $24 million from industry partners and $24 million from the Ministry and Plant and Food Research as the core research provider with three large fishing companies, Sea Lord, Aotearoa Fisheries and Sanford Limited. So the aha moment, as they like to call it, was why do we actually have to strain the fish out? Why do we have to exhaust them in the harvesting process? And why are we damaging them during the harvest? And the answer led to the Precision Seafood Harvesting Initiative, which is now the commercialization phase of nearly 10 years of research. So the program looks at sustainability, quality, and the value gains together with the validation requirements. And we believe this is the biggest step forward in commercial fishing in 150 years. So the technology creates a calm environment within the harvesting process, a, an environment that is caring for the fish. It individualizes the fish, and it actually gives control back to the fish. And it lets us land those fish on the vessel in pristine condition and it allows, therefore, maximum value to be extracted while allowing also survivability and selectivity of the catch that we do not intend to have. And a considerable amount of our post-harvest validation work is carried out to measure the quality of the fish landed on the boat, uh, and specific market demand and market prices also indicate to us that we are absolutely on the right track. So our post-harvest assessment team documents the composition of the catch, the size of the catch and the quality of the fish. And following from that, the development of the handling and storage systems to maintain the quality of that fish. So the focus always remaining on the fish. The significant amount of data that is being collected is being used also to support regulatory change, the change that is required to commercialise this harvesting system. So the current program, uh, its objectives in the snapper fishery of New Zealand uh, to improve the survival rate potential of non-intended catch, uh, the juvenile fish and the bycatch, to increase the value of the target fish that are landed and distributed to market, to improve the handling and the sorting systems required to realise the survival rate potential, and two current program objectives in the hokey fishery of New Zealand which will improve the potential of hokey quality at the rear deck of the vessel and realise market quality also through to market. Uh, sponsor companies are already seeing gains in the market with higher values being paid for the higher quality animals that they are delivering to market. And the Ministry of Primary Industry estimates an uplift of 43.6 million per annum by 2025 is definitely achievable from this particular program. You can see here on this chart, the blue line shows the survival rates at 48 hours, percentage survival, uh, down to uh, the depths that you see on the bottom axis, depths of up to 100 metres. And the orange line shows the typical commercial survival rates using a typical netting technology. So a very significant uplift in survival rates. Regulatory change is also required for the Precision Seafood Harvesting Modular System to be introduced commercially. Uh, and the role of MPI in that, uh, the considerations must include uh, that this must be better than or equivalent to current harvesting systems, that the fishing gear currently fished is actually under special permit, and that needs to move to where it uh, is used in everyday fishing. Uh, also, a consideration is the focus on the bycatch, the amount of bycatch and the survival rates, measuring those very carefully. And as always, ultimately, the need for an empowering regulatory framework to make this innovation used in everyday fishing. I'm now going to show you uh, another video, and this second video lets the scientists and the fishermen tell you their own story. So could I have the second video, please? Precision this Seafood Harvesting. whole process has been uh, 
an intimate collaboration between the New Zealand seafood industry who want to do things better. It started with you know, uh, government funded research into reasonably fundamental issues um, and that followed through um, industrial applied research uh, and then prototyping um, all the way through to the, the current program, PSH. We basically wanted to see where the benchmark was for Hoki. Problem being is that they're you know, between two and say 800 metres down and uh, yeah, we really didn't have any eyes on the, the problem so we designed and built our own underwater cameras and had a look. Uh, and I think the aha moment was really why do we have to strain these fish out? Why do we have to exercise and exhaust them? Why do we have to damage them? And uh, we were sort of going, well, you know, there must be good reasons. You know, people don't, haven't fished for 150 years with these methods for nothing, you know. Uh, and uh, the more we looked into it, the more we found that there weren't any real good reasons as to why we couldn't fit the intral conditions to the animal. And uh, we developed some concepts and prototypes and you know, basically maintained as, as low a level of fatigue as possible. We ended up um, showing that the, the juveniles and uh, fish that were coming into the, the catch were actually being uh, selected out. One of the objectives is to make sure that, the, that any animal that does actually reach the, the surface, if we can't select it out in the gear, is actually delivered to, back to the sea, basically unharmed. When you realise that you can design a highly selective trawl, you're winning in many different ways. You're winning in, in uh, unexplored properties, um, values that we haven't realised. Um, uh, you're producing a, a humane uh, harvesting system. So that the animals win. Uh, I think just a great story. When we first started trialling, I was a total sceptic, thinking this is just a load of rubbish. But I've completely changed my mind. What we're actually finding now is that some of the fish that's coming up, the crew are struggling to understand them because they're not what they expect. We can release juvenile fish, we can eat better quality fish. The net and harvesting technology is really just the start of the process. This will lead on to uh, changes in the vessel designs and layouts, how we handle fish um, and get it into the marketplace. Really the, the, the opportunities are endless. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the future uh, of commercial fishing to me. So there we are, there is the commercial fishing future, right? Um, completely different technology, live fish coming aboard the vessel and you make your decision on board the vessel, whether they stay on board or go back to the ocean, alive and 100% quality. Thank you. Thank you very much for this contribution, Mr. Noel. Distinguished delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we thank again our resource persons and presenters for their contributions to this session and let me lead the meeting again in expressing our thanks and appreciation. The chair now invites further contributions from the delegations on this very interesting topic uh, of the session. The floor is open.